Hey guys, it's Saga, and in this video, we are going to take a detailed look at all the cameras on this iPhone 14. Now, I brushed upon its cameras when I compared it with the ones on the iPhone 11, 12, and 13. But in this video, we are going to take a much deeper dive into its cameras. And I also traveled over 1000 kilometers just so I could take a few image samples in valid conditions. More on that later. But if you haven't checked out my detailed comparison between the cameras on the iPhone 14, 13, 12, and 11, you guys should definitely check that video out after you're done watching this one. That video took a long time to make and I have a few juicy takes about these cameras in that video. Coming back to the cameras on this iPhone 14. It gets a dual 12 megapixel camera setup on its back in this diagonal placement which looks very similar to the cameras on the iPhone 13. But the camera lenses this time are slightly bigger. Its main camera gets a much larger 12 megapixel sensor with 1.9 micron pixel size, f1.5 aperture and sensor chip stabilization. If this sounds familiar, then that is because it is the same main image sensor from the iPhone 13 Pro last year. The ultra wide camera, however, gets the same 12 megapixel sensor with f2.4 aperture and a 13 mm lens as the iPhone 13 and 12. It would have been so great if we also got the ultra wide camera from the iPhone 13 Pro on this 14. That way, we could have got macro shooting capabilities as well. But it seems like Apple wants to keep the macro, telephoto, and LiDAR just for the pro iPhones for now. After using the same front facing camera for 2 to 3 years, iPhone 14 finally gets a new front facing camera. It still measures at 12 megapixels. But now, it gets a much wider f1.9 aperture and autofocusing capabilities, so we might see some much needed improvements in the selfies from iPhones going forward. You can still shoot 4K 60fps videos in Dolby Vision HDR with all the cameras, and the cinematic mode videos can now be shot at 24 and 30fps at 4K resolution. There is a new action mode for shooting super stabilized videos as well. These videos are shot at 2.8K resolution and they get a big crop compared to the normally stabilized videos. With all of that out of the way, let us now get to the image and video samples from all the cameras on this iPhone 14. I wanted to begin with bright daytime shots, but the weather conditions in Pune just won't let me take images in bright sunny lighting conditions. I did manage to take some good looking shots though. Even in these overcast conditions, you can see that the main camera is capturing a lot of information. Everything looks sharp and the noise even in these conditions is kept to a minimum. If you saw my camera comparison video between the iPhone 11, 12, 13 and 14, you might know that this iPhone 14 also captures slightly brighter images compared to the previous iPhones and the colors in its images are also looking more lively. Now you will notice this only when you compare these images with the ones from other phones but there is a slight green tint in some of its shots. It's not there in every shot and if it still bothers you, you can easily take care of it with a bit of editing in the Photos app. While these images look good, I still wanted to get a few shots with bright sunlight so I decided to go on a drive until I found clear skies. I live in Pune and we have some very beautiful mountains around. I thought maybe if I went on one of the mountains, I might see a few clear skies. So I drove up to the mountains with my wife, but we did not see clear skies there. We drove for some more time, crossed the mountains, but the cloud covers just won't budge. So we kept on driving. We passed a few good and tall waterfalls on the way, which always puts a smile on your face. And then finally, I was even more happy to see some sunlight and bright blue sky. At this point, we were so far away from Pune and so close to Goa, that we decided to drive the last few miles and spend a day there so I could take some amazing images the next day. If you guys don't know this, then Goa is almost 500 kilometers from Pune, so I drove 1000 kilometers just so I could take some image samples in sunny lighting conditions. If you guys appreciate that, then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and maybe share this video with your friends and family so the YouTube algorithm recommends it to more people. So finally some good, sunny and colorful images. The sensor behind the main camera is bigger this time and you can see it is capturing a ton of details. The colors in these images pop out, making the images look so good. There's a bit more sharpening in these images than we are used to from iPhone cameras. Don't get me wrong, these images don't look overly sharp, just sharper than the images from previous iPhones. I'm so glad I decided to come here and take these images. This is how you might use your new phone's camera, taking images with it when you're on a trip. And as you can see, it is doing an excellent job. It was a hot sunny day and I was out taking these images for a long time, but I am happy to tell you that iPhone 14 did not overheat and the display did not dim even a bit. This is great news because the iPhone 13 got really hot by this time and dimmed the display by quite a lot. Coming to the daytime indoor shots, we still see the main camera capture a lot of details. You can see the amount of details even as I zoom in on these images. It's the big image sensor with wide aperture and the new improved deep fusion algorithm that we see such sharp results indoors as well. I said a couple of times that the colors pop out. And as you can probably tell, they really do. I found that the iPhone 14 saturates the colors a bit more and depending on your taste, you may or may not like it. 
but it does handle the skin tones really well and makes them look very natural. Color is a personal choice and whether or not you like the ones coming out of the iPhone 14 depends on your personal preference. You however get the photographic styles where you can adjust the colors, contrast, warmth or tone of your shots according to your liking. Yes, we have seen this image before but just look at how good the colors look. I would say these colors are not exactly how they looked in real life. The actual scene wasn't this bright and saturated. But if you want to upload these images to social media, they are good to go without any extra editing and they will look really good on your wall. Coming to the HDR shots, in certain situations the iPhone 14 does really well. As you can see, it did really well in this shot and brought up a huge amount of details from the shadows while preserving the highlights. We still get the smart HDR 4 algorithm like on the iPhone 13s and to be honest, the dynamic range didn't really got much better. If you guys remember, last year I wasn't very happy with the iPhone 13's HDR capabilities and I was hoping that Apple would work a bit more on getting it right this time. But no. Apple should really take a long and hard look at how good the HDR mode on some of the competing phones have got and take some notes from there. While the dynamic range in this shot is good, the overall shot looks completely flat. All we could do is just hope that it gets better with updates. The main camera is very quick and accurate at setting the focus on any nearby object and this becomes very important while taking close-up shots. You obviously don't want your phone to keep on hunting for focus when you're trying to take an image. Thanks to the big sensor and wide aperture, we get sharp subject and very smooth creamy out of focus elements in the background. Although the sensor size is huge, the minimum focusing distance for these close-up shots is really good. I mean, it is obviously not as good as previous iPhones, but it's much better considering the overall larger sensor size. I personally would have loved to get a bit more closer to my subjects for taking close-up shots. So what I do is switch to 1.2 or 1.3x digital zoom and then click my close-up shots. It still keeps the images looking detailed with very little noise. Another thing which I would have loved to see is the same ultra-wide camera as the iPhone 13 Pro because that would have given us macro shooting capabilities making these dual cameras even more versatile. Right now, if you want to shoot macro images with your iPhone, you will either have to go with Pro iPhones from last or this year or use add-on lenses like these ones. These are the ones from Moment and Skywick but there are many others available on Amazon and you can choose the one which fits your budget. That brings us to the ultra-wide camera. This is the same camera that we got on the iPhone 12 and 13 but the newer image processing pipeline makes these images look slightly better. The ultra-wide shots in these bright sunny lighting conditions look really good and no matter how hard you look, you won't see too much noise in these images. Like with almost all ultra-wide angle cameras, the center of the frame is sharper than the edges but thanks to the lens correction option, we don't see the edges being curved or distorted. If we move to overcast or not so ideal lighting conditions, the images still look good but since this camera doesn't have the widest aperture, the processor has to crank up the ISO to capture more light which in the end adds a noticeable amount of noise in the shot. You can easily see that noise if I zoom in on these images. The images still look good and this wide lens comes in very handy when you want to get more of the scene in your shot. It lets you capture a completely different perspective of the scene and the best thing is, iPhones don't change the color temperature or overall white balance of the scene when you switch from the normal to wide lens. So if you want to take wide and normal shots of the same scene, they don't look like they have been captured with two different cameras. They just look like you have two shots with the same camera but just with different lenses. I really appreciate that Apple has doing this for many years and other manufacturers have also started taking note of this and are trying to implement this on their phones as well. I love taking portrait shots and it's just amazing to see how far smartphone cameras have come with these. If you take care of a few things while taking these portraits, then they will end up looking as if they were clicked with DSLR cameras. They still have some way to go when we have multiple people in the shot or when the lighting conditions are a bit tricky but I like these portrait shots a lot. The faces are not overly sharp in these portraits like we see from some of the other phones. Colors in these shots look very good, skin tones are natural and the overall images have a very soothing feel. All these are completely unedited and untouched images and if you want, you can make them look even better with a bit of editing. I think by default, the aperture or the f-stop number is set to f2.8 which might make the portrait shots look a bit unnatural. You can lower that number to something between f3.5 to f5.0 depending on how far or near your subject is and that will make the portrait shots look very natural. Many people don't know this but you can take portrait mode images of objects as well and these images again look so much better than the normal ones. A clear separation of the subject from rest of the shot and smooth pocket to the background and foreground in these portrait shots makes your images stand out from rest of the average looking ones. iPhone 14 still misses on detecting some parts of the subject like the strings in this shot accurately but I think the overall image still looks better than this flat looking one. Again, have the f-stop number set to something between f4.0 to f6.3 to make these portrait shots look the most natural. With that, let us move on to the images which are took in artificial lighting conditions. 
for a couple of years now, I don't think that we have seen iPhones struggling at these kind of images. With the deep fusion algorithm, bigger image sensors, wide aperture and great image stabilization to let the sensor gather good amount of light, I think these well-lit indoor images which I took during the night time look almost as good as the outdoor daytime shots. There is a ton of information in these images and very little noise. If you start getting into places where the lights are not too bright or where the lighting conditions are a bit uneven, that is where the iPhone 14 still keeps on doing a very good job. Since the image sensor behind the main camera is bigger and the wide aperture also lets in more light on it, this phone doesn't even need to switch to the night mode for these situations. As the light gets even lower, we start seeing some noise creeping into the darker parts of the images, but it is still not a distraction at this point. I observed that this iPhone 14 doesn't switch to the night mode all that easily. It tries to take images in normal mode for as long as possible, which might be a good and a bad thing. Good because you don't have to hold the phone steady while the night mode shot is being captured. And bad because I think some of these images could have used the extra bit of light that the night mode would have captured. I just wish Apple starts giving us the night mode toggle where we can choose to turn it on in any lighting conditions instead of the phone deciding when it needs to turn it on. Once the night mode kicks in, the main camera on this phone captures so much more information which the normal mode won't even let you see. There is obviously a lot of noise in these night mode shots, but the phone tries to reduce this noise to a large extent to make these images look good and usable. Just remember that while capturing night mode shots, you will have to hold your phone steady for 2 to 3 seconds even after you have pressed the shutter button. If you move your hand during that time, the image will be blurry or if someone in the shot moves during that time, they will be blurred out. The wide lens also gets the night mode and if there is some ambient light around, these shots turn out pretty good. This wide lens works best in situations like these. Just look at how good the wide shots turn out. But if the light is anything less than ideal, I am very hesitant to switch to this lens because the images are completely filled with noise and don't look good at all. It's nice to have the option to capture a low light wide shot, but you can look at these images yourself and decide if you want to use this lens or not. I am sure many of you might have heard about the lens flare issue which has been there on the main camera of iPhones ever since the iPhone 11. If you don't know about it, then you see these green or blue dots somewhere in your shot if you have the light source in your frame. This was a huge problem on the iPhone 11 and 12 and it has been reduced to some extent on the iPhone 14 but it is not completely gone. This has to do something with how the light reflects when it hits the 7 element lenses on the main camera and Apple still hasn't found a way to get rid of it. In all fairness, this is not just an issue on iPhones. There are many other phones with 6 or 7 element lenses which are facing these issues and you even see it on very costly DSLR lenses. I took over 150 night mode shots and I had to go looking for the images where I could see the flares in so I could show it to you guys. These are the only 6 images which I saw them in so I think it is getting better with time. If you see this in your viewfinder while taking low light shots, the only way to avoid it right now unless there is a more permanent solution of course is to move your camera a bit so the lens flares are overlapped with the right source that they are coming from. That brings us to the front facing camera. I said this before that the iPhone 14 now gets an improved front facing camera and you can see a difference in these images. All the selfies now look much sharper and they have very little noise in them. And since the focus is now not fixed, you get much sharper selfies when you have multiple people in the shot. I feel like iPhones have never had the best selfie camera. But this new sensor along with the software improvements definitely looks like a step in the right direction. Colors look good and even the skin tones look as they are in real life for the most part in even lighting conditions. I don't take a lot of selfies but even I could tell that these ones look sharper than the ones on the previous iPhones. We could say the same for portrait selfies. Edge detection around the hair could definitely use some improvement with software updates but the overall portrait selfies look really good and natural. You can lower the aperture number and the images would look even more natural. Skin tones also look good. But now even with autofocus, this phone still can't keep multiple faces in focus while taking portrait selfies. And of course, we had a nice bright sun waiting for us when we came back to Pune. Here is a video from the front facing camera of the iPhone 14. You can see how it is handling the overall colors of the scene, exposure and stabilization when I am walking around with it. For videos, you can shoot HDR and Dolby Vision 4K videos at up to 60 FPS. These are simply the best looking videos that you could get out of any smartphone and there is no doubt about that. Colors look natural, there is amazing dynamic range and there is just an overall pleasing look to these videos that no other smartphone manufacturer has been able to replicate yet. If you want to shoot videos with your phone, iPhone is your best bet. No matter which of these cameras you shoot with, the videos will look just as good. There wasn't a lot of place for me to move back, but the ultra wide angle camera let me capture the complete beauty of this place in 4K resolution. iPhones have combined image stabilization with software based stabilization for years now, and that made its video look extremely stable and free of any jitters. 
But if you are shooting videos in challenging conditions, like when you are shooting out of a car driving on a bumpy road, or if you are trying to capture something while you are running, then the results might not be all that good. To fix that, Apple has introduced Action Mode. This mode crops in your 4K video back quite a bit and shoots at just 2.8K resolution. But the frame is rock steady no matter how much you are shaking the camera. I tried it while I was shaking the camera deliberately or while going up and down the stairs. And the videos with and without the action mode have a huge difference. Once you learn to compensate for the big crop and shoot a bit wider to begin with, you can take some really amazing looking solid videos in this mode. We again get the cinematic mode and it has got a lot better and faster at detecting the subject and locking onto the focus. But now, it can even shoot in 4K 24 and 30 FPS which is just amazing. Just look at how good this video looks. This might even be taken with a DSLR camera. The cinematic mode when done right, you would never know. We get cinematic mode 4K 30 FPS video on the front facing camera as well. You can see how the phone will change the focus from one face to other without me doing anything. You don't need to have people or faces in the shot for the cinematic mode to work. It works on any scene that you like and does a great job with it. If you feel like it missed the focus on some point, you can just as easily go into the editing app and change the focus point and even the amount of blur to the background after you are done shooting the video. So we have seen over 115 image and video samples from all the cameras of this iPhone 14 and as you can tell, it does amazingly well in all lighting conditions. It is a bit difficult to tell for the daytime shots but for low light images, it is definitely better than the previous iPhones. You should check out my camera comparison video to see by how much. If you are using an iPhone 11 or any phone from before that and you are looking to upgrade, the iPhone 14 will give you a much needed bump in the camera performance. If you already have the iPhone 12 or 13, you could still see a few improvements in the iPhone 14's cameras but I feel your phone also has some really good cameras and you can keep on using it for another year at least. So after looking at over 100 image and video samples, what do you guys think about the cameras on this iPhone 14? Let me know in the comments. And if you guys are planning on getting this phone, I will really appreciate if you get it from the affiliate links in the description section. That is it for this video guys. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel for a lot more quality tech videos like this. You can also check out some of the other videos from this channel. This has been Saga and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.